hello everyone today's topic is heat input so everyone who has reviewed a wps or working in a fabrication or welding field must have heard about heat input so let us discuss about heat input so what are the contents of today's video uh, what is heat input in welding how to calculate heat input what are the effect of heat input in welding factors influencing heat input so reference standards for heat input calculation are first of all we have taken it from uh, ASME section 9 that is qualification standard for welding brazing and fusing procedures welders brazers and welding brazing and fusing operators AWS D1.1 which is structural welding code for steel EN ISO 15614-1 specification for qualification of welding procedures for metallic materials welding procedure test EN ISO 1011-1 that is recommendation for welding of metallic materials part 1 general guidance guidance for arc welding okay so these are the few standards uh, from where we have taken the reference like uh, heat input formula, heat input calculation and uh, where it is given in the standard we will also discuss in the upcoming slides. So let's move for the next slide. So what is the definition of heat input? Heat input is amount of heat induced into the welding joint during welding. Arc energy. Arc energy is the amount of heat generated in the welding arc per unit length of weld and is usually expressed in kilojoules per millimeter length of the weld. Okay, so why we have taken heat input and arc energy, we will discuss in upcoming slides. Okay, heat input is supplementary essential variable as per ASME section 9 that is given in table QW253. Okay, so what is supplementary essential variable? Supplementary essential variable are conditions in which a change will affect the toughness properties of the joint, heat affected zone or base metal. Okay, so here for the reference we have taken the table where it is given that heat input is a supplementary essential variable. Here you can see uh, table QW253. So this is the table, these are the clauses given here. And these are the brief of variables, these are the essential variable, these are the supplement essential variable and these are the non-essential variables. So where it is written, so you can see heat input, if you can go through this table, here it is written it is a supplementary essential variable. Okay, moving to the next slide. Heat input is supplementary essential variable as per AWSD 1.1 given in table 6.7. So as both are American standards AWSD 1.1 and ASME, so it is supplementary essential variable as per the code. Okay, so where it is given, there is a table 6.7, pick your supplementary essential variables. So here you can see in the electrical characteristics an increase in the heat input. Okay, so the heat input is supplementary essential variable for all the processes whichever is given in the top of the section. Okay, so now moving to the next slide. Heat input is essential variable in ENI so 15614-1 as given in clause 8.4.7. Okay, so from the American standard we have seen that it is an essential variable, uh, supplementary essential variable, but as per the ENISO standard 15614-1, it says it is an essential variable. So, what are the definition of essential variable? What is the definition of essential variable? Essential variable are conditions in which a change is considered to affect the mechanical properties other than toughness of the joint. Okay, so this is the definition of essential variable. So here it is written in clause 8.4.7 heat input arc energy. Okay. So how to calculate heat input? Now we have 
we have the knowledge that what is we have the basic understanding that what is heat input and okay where it is written in the course where it is given what is the reference standards where we can find okay so now how to calculate heat input heat input is calculated basically in kilojoule per mm or kilojoule per inch okay so what is the formula uh, the following equation shall be used for heat input calculation as per asme aws standard okay so we require voltage ampere and travel speed okay so the formula says voltage into ampere into 60 divided by travel speed mm per minute or inch per minute into 1000 okay or we can uh, calculate it by voltage into ampere divided by travel speed mm per second or inch per second into 1000 so you have seen that here we have multiplied by 60 but here it is not multiplied by 60 now why so if the travel speed is calculated as mm per minute then we have to multiply it by 60 if travel speed is given in mm per second then we need not to multiply it with 60 okay so in some competitive examinations like cwi exam for c sweep and aws and in IIW, IW also it is given IIW it is given in mm per second so don't be confused with multiplication of 60 because uh, the question will be 5 to 10 marks so we will lost our marks if we use uh, this multiplication of 60 if the speed is given in mm per second okay so don't be confused with this okay so now moving to the next slide Heat input when it is calculated as per EN 1011-1 and EN ISO 15614-1 heat input is expressed in terms of arc energy into thermal efficiency factor okay so what is arc energy it is voltage into ampere into 60 divided by travel speed and per minute or inch per minute into 1000 Heat input is expressed in terms of half energy into thermal efficiency factor. Okay, so this formula remains same uh, as we have seen in uh, calculation as per AWSD 1.1 and ASME section 9. Okay, only the change is there. We have to multiply this value in with thermal efficiency factor. Okay. So what is thermal efficiency factor that we will discuss in the upcoming slides moving to the next slide uh, the thermal efficiency uh, factor is the ratio of heat energy introduced into the welding arc to the electrical energy consumed by the arc okay so thermal efficiency factors for different welding processes are given below so thermal efficiency factor value will be different for different welding processes you can see for SAW welding summer dark welding thermal efficiency factor is 1 okay for shielded metal arc welding it is 0.8 for metal inert gas and metal active gas it is 0.8 for FCW it is 0.8 TIG it is 0.6 plasma it is 0.6 okay so we have to multiply with this factor for the particular process heat input calculation okay so let's move to the next slide what are the effects of heat input in welding okay now we have we have the understanding that what is heat input where to check in the reference standard what is the formula for calculation now we have to understand what are the effects of heat input in welding okay so say if heat input is high then what are the effects onto the welding okay high heat input leads to slow cooling rate higher the heat input slower the cooling rate will be okay so slower cooling rates in more time in austenitic temperature range okay slower cooling rate results in more time in the austenitic temperature range which leads to the green growth in HZ region giving the low toughness okay high heat input welding process in deep narrow groove shape well can contribute to a risk of solidification cracking so these are the main effect of high heat input in welding moving to the next slide 
effect of low heat input. Low heat input leads to fast cooling rate. Okay, and we all know that faster cooling rate results in hard brittle structure in HAZ area. And due to hard brittle structure, there is a risk of hydrogen cracking. Therefore, heat input must be controlled. Okay, so now we have the understanding that what are the effects of high heat input and what are the effects of low heat input. Okay, so moving towards the next slide. What are the factors influencing F heat input? Affecting heat input, okay. Heat input is mainly influenced by travel speed of the welding electrode, welding position and welding process, okay. Travel speed. Slow travel speed means high heat input. Okay. Fast travel speed means low heat input. Welding position. Vertical up. That is 3G as per ASME, PF as per ENISO 6947. High heat input. Okay. So this position will give high heat input. Vertical down 3G or PG welding position give the lowest heat input. Overhead welding position give low heat input. Okay. And welding in the flat position down hand can be a low or high heat input position because the welder has more flexibility about the travel speed that can be used. Okay. So here we have taken both the position indicators like 3G, 3G, 4G, 1G. So this G that is as per ASME, this PG as per ISO 6947. Okay, so moving to the next slide. Welding process. Saw welding process has potential to give the highest heat input. TIG or GTW and MIG or Blick MAC process can produce very low heat input. Typical heat input value for controlled heat input welding tend to be in the range of 1 to 3.5 kJ per mm. Thank you everybody for much watching my video. Please do subscribe my channel. If you have any question, you can ask in the comment box. Thank you very much.